a math scientist at Sacramento City College. <laughs> but I'm um, also a chemistry major. So let's get this started. Okay, so my presentation is on the antibiotic effects of St. John's wort on bacteria. So St. John's wort, or known by scientific name Hypericum frumpetum L, is indigenous to temperate and subtropical areas around the world, but most notably North America, Europe, Turkey, Russia, India, China, and Brazil. And as most of you commonly know who are aware of St. John's wort, it is used as a, an herbal treatment for depression of the sorts. But it was only first used and noticed by the Maidu of Northern California for some more other pharmaceutical uses. If you look right here, you can see the flower fully blossom. Now, perfectum is actually Latin for perforated, as you can see here from the leaves, which has this very, this very clear perforated view. But the part that, because uh, I tested the, an extract, it came in capsule form, but the part that I actually extracted it from was the seeds, or, most, or the buds most commonly, as you can see right here. So the Maidu, they are a group of Native Americans who are indigenous to Northern California, but currently they're located in the central Sierra Nevada region. Now, as I was saying about some of those other uses, these were actually first recorded by the Maidu. So they used it as a poultice for inflammation of the skin and sores and pains. And also, again, uh, like Natalie, they used it for treatment of venereal diseases or other known as STDs. So as you can see from the geographic distribution map, it's a very widespread crop. Anywhere with low altitude or climb in a, a relatively moist environment, the plant can actually become an invasive species like it is in England. So here are some uses that we research today but are not, still not clinically used. You need to treat wounds, burns, and pains. And also where I got my inspiration from was a single published study on the antibacterial effects of St. John's wort and they tested it on various strains of Staphylococcus, notably MRSA or Staphylococcus <laughs> aureus. Though still, additional studies are needed to address potential effects on bacteria, mostly the pathogenic strains. So from my hypothesis, I thought that there would be a heavy exertion of antibiotic effects on both the E. coli, which is a GI tract bacteria, and as you can see here, the difference between them two, this one has more flagella to move around its aqueous environment versus Staphylococcus epidermis, which is a skin bacteria, which as you can see grows in colonies to live in more dry and arid regions. Arid regions. Now, the aqueous extracts I prepared are a tea, which most of you are familiar with, just boiling the water and then pouring it whatever you want and letting the plant seep or diffuse out into the water. And a decoction, which is actually putting whatever you want in the water and then boiling it along with it, thus making the soup. Now, as similar as these preparation methods may sound, they actually yield very different results. Now, I've seen here my T and my C's for E. coli. If you look around the higher concentrations, like you can really see a clear prebiotic effect going on here as compared to low concentrations where you just see a fluctuation. But it, as you can see, it's very defined as a prebiotic. And if you look at my staph epi, although still the same fluctuation, if you go to the highest point of concentration, we can still see that very distinct prebiotic effect. Now, my decoction is also a little bit more varied, but still around a high concentration, we still get that prebiotic effect going on. But we start to see a little bit of a minor antibiotic effect, although that could be from an error, but you guys can kind of see the picture. So for my decoction, this one really threw me for a loop because it didn't have the whole trend of a prebiotic effect at high concentrations, but it had a more antibiotic effect at low concentrations. Now my KBs greatly resemble those of my MIC results. As you can see, there is no antibiotic effect at all whatsoever for E. coli or stuff. And as for my T, again, no antibiotic effect whatsoever. So you can greatly see that my MICs prove that there is a more prebiotic effect going on here. Now, for my conclusion, it showed that my MICs noted that there is a pretty distinct prebiotic effect at high concentrations of the extract, while in the decoction, we start to see more of a slight antibiotic effect in both strains of bacteria. Now, although my original hypothesis of my extract having a huge antibiotic effect against both were rejected, we still gain valuable data of a prebiotic effect at high concentrations for both the tea and the decoction. Now, I also noticed that 
there must be some active ingredient in my plant extract because whenever um, I mix the extraction in the medium, it called a clear precipitate, which is just solid forming when two liquids mix, when two liquids mix to form as soon as you came in contact with it. And also, whenever I injected the bacteria into the the, uh, the extraction, the medium mixture, it still formed a precipitate. So as I noted in my first couple of slides about the previous studies, it's known, like the data show that St. John's wort is stronger against more pathogenic bacteria versus normal flora, though further research is still needed in the antibiotic effects of H. peripheral or St. John's wort against pathogenic bacteria versus normal flora. Also, I'd like to isolate the precipitate causing compound and test its bacteria, its antibacterial effects alone against uh, pathogenic <coughs> versus normal flora. Also now, hyperfin and hypericin are the more active compounds in St. John's wort and they're known for their antidepressant effects and their, their poultice or skin cream effects for sores and bruises. So I too would like to extract those active compounds and test them for their antibacterial effects. And I would like to acknowledge all these people, but most notably the mighty people for giving us this record of knowledge that we could build up upon.